Hello everyone! Welcome back to another house tutorial. Today we are doing a 1.15 inspired beekeeper's house that I showed off a little while ago in my 5 ideas for 1.15 builds. So let's get started. Here are the blocks that I've picked out for our lovely house. This is going to be the foundational blocks, these are the walls and wall detail blocks, and this is the roof and roof detail blocks. I grouped them like this so it's a little easier for me to understand, and I will also be adding blocks to this as I need more details, but I'm not going to put all of those in the palette, this should give you a general idea. We're going to begin by grabbing our foundation blocks. In this case, my cobble and my andesite should do the trick. We're going to start by creating some pillars with just the andesite, going three high for each one and spacing them by three every time. We're going to do four of these on this side and then we're going to go to the ends. On the ends, it's going to be very similar, but this time we're just going to be spacing it with three on the end. So it's a rectangle and not a square. There we go, once you have all of these andesite pillars in, you should have something like this. Now we can go in with our cobblestone. And very similar type thing, we're just going to fill the cobblestone in all the way up. Make sure you're going in one block when you're doing this because this adds lots of extra depth. Now that that's in, we're going to grab some more of our andesite detail blocks, the stair and the slab. We're going to go around to each of these and create a little bit of an arch on all of these separate sections. Alright, at this stage we can call our foundation just about done. So let's go ahead and grab some of our wall blocks now. We're going to be starting with a pillar block. For me, that is a stripped spruce log. There are so many different options in Minecraft that will work for pillars though, so just pick one that you like the most. For these pillar blocks, we're going to be coming up from each of these andesite pillars, but only in certain places because this is where we want to figure out the layout of our house. This area right here is going to be the main bulk of the structure, and then we're going to split these two sections right here, one into an entranceway and one into almost a little porch type building. So we're going to adjust the height of our pillars based on that. I'm going to start with going about seven high right off of this pillar. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Take a look at that, that looks about high enough, so I'm going to go around and do this to the rest of the pillars now, except for the front ones. That's perfect, just like that. This pillar right here is not going to have anything on it. This one here, we're going to go probably about four high and four high again. That way it gives us this slightly lower section next to the higher section, just to give some different variety. Now let's turn our attention back to our foundation for just a moment so that this makes a little bit more sense. We're going to come over and grab our cobblestone again, as well as a cobblestone stair. Now that we have our stairwell established, we know that this area right here is all going to be sort of porch, and then this area is going to be where our walls are, so I'm going to mark that in so that I can easily see where I need to be placing my walls. And I'm also going to go ahead and place those now. I'm going to place them right on top of those andesite archways we did. This is not going to give us any depth, but we're going to make up for that in some of the details and the roof that we're adding in. So it's going to be okay. At the end of the day, it'll end up giving us more interior space, which is what we're kind of sacrificing for here. This section here is a little bit more awkward. If it helps you visualize it, you can drag this pillar up right here. This will need to be done on the interior anyways, but it'll make it clear that this wall right here needs to be taller. And then this wall right here needs to be the shorter wall. And once the walls are in, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Now, this connection right here looks really awkward to me. I don't really like having blocks meet like this without any sort of detail over them. So that's what the spruce is for in my inventory now. On each of these pillars where they meet, I'm going to put an upside down stair and then a right side up stair. Just on all of these pillars. And then to connect those right up above this slab stair and a site layer, we're going to do a layer of slabs of spruce. That is looking so much better already. Let's also knock in our door while we're here. That'll go right there. It can also go right here, just, you know, wherever you want it. All right, now our walls and our foundation are looking good. I think it's time to move on to the roof. So let's go over to our palette and pick up those blocks. All right, now we're gonna be starting on arguably the most important part of this entire building, which is the roof, which we've picked out our lovely bright honeycomb colors for. I'm gonna start by going along each edge and doing just an edge of stairs, hanging out one over on all sides. 
And of course, you want to do this one down here as well. I'm going to connect this kind of this way to that pillar just to help transition that a little bit better. And kind of same thing on that side. So now it's time to work out the actual shape of this roof. And for that, we're just going to be connecting off of this overhang that we have here. First going with an upside down stair and then a right side up stair, kind of just slowly making our way up. We're going to do this twice and then we're going to start going up at a steeper incline. So after two, three, if you count the edge one, right side up ones, then we're going to go ahead and place another upside down one and then a full block. This will kind of slope the roof upwards and give us a lovely shape. And do that one more time. Then we're going to bring these together by doing an upside down stair and a right side up stair, just like so. Now all we have to do is do that again right here on this edge. And now that that's in, we just have one more house layer to go right here. And on this smaller one, we're going to do kind of the same shape, but this time only one right side up one before we go into the steeper full block. And then we're just going to connect that together the exact same way, just like so. And if you want, now that that's done, we can go and connect the base layer of this top stair with a slab and connect that all the way into the wall. And we can do that up here on this big roof as well to kind of complete the shape and give us a good idea of what this shape is actually looking like. I am definitely happy with this shape. There are so many different ways that you could vary this, but this one for me is nice and simple and it works for what we're going for. So now we can start on our roof color. Now we can begin with the fun part, adding in some color to this roof. I'm gonna get our gradient ready and starting with a darker color, which for us is the pumpkin. There are a lot of different gradients you could use, but this one works so well with the honeycomb. I just love it. So we're gonna start by staircasing the pumpkin up by two blocks, and then we're going to sharpen the incline a little bit and go two blocks there. And then again with our concrete, two blocks right there. So that gives two blocks for each color in our palette. Now we have to do that on the small roof as well, but for this one, just a layer of pumpkin, a layer of honeycomb, and then a layer of concrete. And as you can see, we do have a wall to complete in here, but let's get the other side of our roof in before we do that. There we go, that looks like a fully completed roof to me. Now let's connect up all of these awkward walls that we've got going on, like this one right here. We'll just bring this pillar all the way up to the top and then connect the walls all the way up. Same thing on this side, but it's a little easier because there's just less blocks to work with because of that extra roof. There we are. Now at this stage, you have a very complete house. I mean, you could do the interior in this, knock out some windows, and be perfectly happy with it. But we are going to add some extra details to this house just to make it stand out a little bit more and be more unique. We're going to start with a little overhang right here on this roof. I'm going to bring this out like so and kind of mark out the shape with full blocks because otherwise these are a little challenging to get in. Now that I have these full blocks, you can see it's just three coming one down from the concrete, then two, and then one. In this sort of shape, we can knock out those inner blocks now. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect up the honeycomb just like so to kind of flow with the roof naturally. And we're going to add some of these fun little details to the edge of our roof kind of curve this one in a little bit, give it a really, really, really thick edge. I love doing this to my houses. That looks so fantastic to me, but I think we need this thick edge everywhere else, don't you think? Let's go ahead and to the edges of this roof. Let's first quickly add some slabs going all along the edge of all of the roofs. There we are, and once our slabs are in, I think we can add some more of these details. Let's just go kind of connect all of these together with some more stairs. You notice I'm not really caring too, too much about where I'm placing all of these. Just so long as they get placed, they kind of curve naturally on their own. I'm not going to have to worry about it, which is lovely for me. At the top here, I'm just doing an upside down and upside down and a right side up. And I'm gonna, of course, keep doing that all the way along. I love a nice thick roof edge and this one adds a little bit of chaos into the mix in my opinion. I'm going to come through here now and add a beam that will kind of make it look like it's supporting the top of this very sloped roof. I like the effect that that gives and I'm also going to go along the top right here and add another slab just pointing out a little bit. If you wanted you could hang a lantern right off here and it would look beautiful. 
Let's also go along the top of our roof now and add some of these slabs just to bump everything up. And we have to repeat those details over here on these roofs. So let's do it again. We're just matching the direction of our existing stairs, just like so. For the smaller roof, we're gonna leave this one nice and simple. Although I am going to go through once again with my log. So let's bring that log right through there. And also I forgot the wall blocks right there. There we go, that finishes that off amazingly. Let's go ahead and decide where our windows are gonna go now. I definitely think this wall right here lends itself to having some big, beautiful windows. So that's a perfect spot. And this spot right here as well is perfect for a window. Those small little details on the roof make such a big difference to this house, but there's still something else that we can do. This house is supposed to be inspired by like a beekeepers type house. So it needs to look a little bit more farm-like. I want to add a tower to it with a windmill. So let's go back to our foundation blocks over here and see if we can't get that in. So I'm going to come to the back corner of this house and I want this tower to look like it's built into this house that's already here. So essentially what I want to do to this house is add a tower in this back corner with sort of a windmill on it. So in order to get this appearance, I want to have a 3x3 three three tower. We're going to start with our polished andesite, which is going to be out by one block. So we're going to skip the corner block and just go a size of 3 all the way around. So you'll notice it connects sort of asymmetrically. It connects to this furthest block right here, but it connects to the middle block over here. And that's perfect. I want it to look very integrated into this house and not sticking out too far. Once we've decided where the foundation for this tower goes, we just have to build it up to match the height of our original foundation, which is three blocks. Now we can go ahead with the main part of the tower, which should be a three by three area that's just gonna go all the way up. Don't be afraid to break through the roof blocks where you need to. So at this point, our tower reaches right up to the height of the top point of our house. And we're gonna go just a little bit taller than that. I think about five blocks more once you reach the top height. So one, two, three, four, five, and let's build that up the rest of the way. Now that this is in, it's time to put a roof on the top of it. This is again going to be a fairly basic roof, but it's going to follow the same principle that that bottom one did. So we're going to line the edges with some lovely dark oak. And you'll notice this one is facing the same way as this little one right here, and these two are facing the other way. This balances things out. I don't want all of my roofs to all be facing that way. Some of them need to face in different directions, and that helps out your build quite a lot. Now let's go an upside down stair on each of these, and then a full block. We want this to be not just a tiny little roof, so the full block helps me add some height to it. And then we're going to connect that together again with some slabs. Once that's in, you've pretty much completed your roof. Again, we can go along the edge right here with some slabs to match what we've done below, but we're not going to thicken this one too much because it'll look a little too top heavy. Then when we're ready, we can grab our honeycomb block and fill this in. Just two blocks right on top of each other like that. And then finishing off our main wall with some andesite. To make this tower look a little bit more quirky, what I'm gonna do is actually add in some walls like this, kind of varied throughout the entire thing to kind of make it look a little curvy, a little less structured, like it could topple over or it's had chunks taken out of it. Just gives it more of a quirky feel and I really like that. And now this is indeed meant to be a windmill, so let's grab our log block right over here. And we also are going to need a fence. I'm going to use spruce fence, you can use whichever color you would like. Then I'm going to come right here, just in the center, I'm going to build that out about five blocks. And then from there, we're going to go straight out by four on each of these edges. Just four on every side. And once we've got that in, we're gonna take the end three and build them down. And you wanna make sure this is on the same side all the way around so that it looks like it could spin. And when you're finished, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. If you wanna do a finishing touch, you can put a lovely little button just right on the edge there. Beautiful. Now that I see where our tower is, I can tell that we can definitely put another window right about there to balance things out, but we don't need more windows on that side. Maybe another one right about here. 
That should do it for windows though, I think. Otherwise we're risking things getting a little bit too busy. Now that we know where our windows are though, let's add in some glass panes to that. I'm gonna go with yellow to match the color of our roof. Again, you can pick whichever color you want. I bet orange would work really well as well. Let's also fill in our door while we're at it. I'm going to be going with the dark oak door. I think it goes really well with the color of our roof. Spruce would also work extremely well. There are still lots of details missing from this house. For example, this window right here, we never got filled in with walls, so let's do that right now. And if you wanted, you could make it an actual window by just doing that and adding in a glass pane right about there. Yes, that looks lovely. Once you go in in the interior, you could even make this a balcony if you wanted to. Let's just fill that in. There we go. I also want to add a chimney to this house, so I got out some cobblestone and some cobblestone wall, and I'm also going to quickly grab a spruce trapdoor. And just up at this tower, I'm just going to add a quirky, curvy little chimney coming right up here. I love the look of that. Let's add some of these walls and place our little campfire right there so that we can get some smoke raising up. So fancy. It does look a little bit bulky like this, so I think I'm going to remove that one and that one. Maybe do something like that. Yeah, that's definitely a lot better. Now it's time to think about our main entrance, and that's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to grab quickly just some spruce gates, some spruce fence, and maybe some of our other spruce details that we have here, along with some trap doors. I want to do some flower baskets out in front of these windows, so I'm going to grab some grass, some leaves, and a flower of your choice. I'm going to go with this pink tulip, I think it'll look beautiful. Now in front of all of these windows, I'm just going to place our grass block, just like this. And we're going to do the bottom and this front side with a trap door. Perfect. And in one of these, I'm going to do leaves just hanging down, just like so, and in the other one, I will do our lovely tulip. We can do that to all of our window areas. I also like piling leaves in areas around the foundation like this. I think it really dresses it up. And one flower box left. Now we need to also fix up this edge so that whoever lives here can't just fall over. I'm going to do that by adding a fence right along that edge and then I would also like to add a little flower pot. So I'm gonna do that with a cauldron right about here and some leaves in that. I want as much greenery as possible in this. Let's place some more down along this foundation. As a final touch of detail, I'm going to be coming along these edges right here, just going down three with fence and hanging a lantern. I'm going to do that again right here, but on this side I'm going to go down two and then hang the lantern. This should light up our house just perfectly, and I love that it's asymmetrical. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching my tutorial on building this beekeeper inspired Minecraft house. Thank you so much for watching, I had so much fun creating it. Definitely tell me what you thought down in the comments down below and show me your builds when you build something like this whether it's inspired by this or just a direct copy of this build. Definitely tweet it at me or show me on my Discord server. I would love to see it. Thank you once again for watching and supporting the channel. Goodbye everyone!